really happy to be here. Uh, um, yeah, so first of all, I just to thank the organizers for inviting me to speak with you here today. I'm really happy to be here. My name's Adam, as was said, and I'm a political activist and organizer based in the UK. Um, I'm the former Black Students Officer for the National Union of Students, and that's how I kind of have been organizing with students for the most part of the previous decade. Um, so with that out of the way, I'm super uh, happy and pleased to be with you here today to discuss and draw out um, linkages between two significant moments in recent memory and um, the mass movements that emerged from them. Um, I think it's super important to highlight as well that we're gathered after the events of the previous week, the crime bill and the ongoing shift towards authoritarianism that we've been uh, seeing. Um, and it's also important to highlight exactly where it is that this finds its roots. The Tory government's been chipping away at our right to protest uh, for the past decade, um, using racism to push through uh, repressive legislation, like in the case of the Counterterrorism and Security Act, so that's their uh, sort of strategy around country violent extremism, country violent extremism, extremism, so to speak, um, and that was rushed through uh, all of the respective stages before receiving royal assent. Um, and in the case of earlier this week, they forced through this bill using the pandemic as a perfect cover. So they're not uh, shy to. Uh, make use of crises to push through their agenda uh, in uh, anti-democratic means, uh, using anti-democratic means to do so. Um, but despite this, it's worth also noting that while the state continues to utilize new tools to repress movements and campaigns um, from below, those very same movements are inventively finding new ways to resist. Um, so I've, I'm joining you here today to kind of like highlight a particular aspect of today's panel um, and for me, that aspect is uh, solidarity among and between uh, Black people and uh, Palestinians. Um, Nelson Mandela taught me that my freedom is incomplete without the freedom of the Palestinians, and that Black liberation cannot be separated from uh, Palestinian liberation. Because when I see them, I see us, to uh, quote a famous video, the viral one, for those of you who've seen it. Um, there are not many, there are not only many parallels in our oppression, but each one is a reason for us to connect our struggles. And this is what I want to talk about um, in terms of uh, solidarity. These, every single one of these reasons, uh, every single one is becomes a reason for us to connect our struggles. And it goes both ways. So when we look to uh, the Black Lives Matter uprisings that happened, Palestinians on Twitter were the first, among the first to provide international support for those protesters in Ferguson. And St. Louis based Palestinians were giving physical support on the ground uh, to uh, frontline uh, demonstrators. Um, from harassment to being beaten, dehumanized, and sometimes killed, stop and search, administrative detention, youth incarceration, these are only some of what we share. And of course, it's important to respect the uniqueness of our struggles and our varied histories. But there's a lot of things that people uh, on both sides of this conversation kind of share from bombs dropped on Palestinian families and their children in their sleep, to the violence of checkpoints that prevents ordinary Palestinians from going about their daily lives, uh, apartheid laws that systematically disenfranchise and deny dignity to Palestinians living in Israel, um, and of course, the occupation. So these are all um, things that are tied and rooted in colonialism, which does not only affect Palestinians, it affects us all, um, and especially black people. This is a global system uh, of racism, the same global system of racism that allows for Mark Duggan to be killed by police on the streets of London with no justice, or Mike Brown in the streets of Ferguson. The same racism that killed Sarah Reed in Holloway prison and incarcerates Palestinian children en masse in prisons over there. And that's why we need to say no to all forms of oppression in our cities or on Palestine streets. Among all of this, however, there is still hope. Um, because as long as there are people like you and I, people like us, who are ready to call out oppression and oppose it, there is hope. And the BDS movement is an example of this. Following over half a century of occupation and brutalization, ethnic, ethnic cleansing and uh, over policing by the state of Israel, uh, Palestinian people have uh, been challenging this throughout, of course, but they've created enough space uh, to reassert their own tactics for liberation, and we must support them as the international community. So Palestinian civil society has made a call for a campaign of sustained boycott, divestment and sanctions against Israel as an effective method for the international community to show its solidarity. And it's been super effective, guys. Um, uh, I could talk about some of the wins um, and I could be all day, I kind of wanna 
leave some time as well for uh, conversation. But when I think about some of the recent wins um, of BDS in the UK, I think quite often of a uh, French environmental service company and BDS target Violia, who was forced into uh, selling off their business in the occupied Palestinian territories due, due to mass losses incurred by BDS action. Coming back though to the Arab uprising, um, just to share a quick story and I kind of will, uh, try to close on this. Uh, just over 10 years ago, I recall being a sixth form student in college, attending um, one of the regular organizing meetings that were happening for the anti-fees mobilizations back in 2010-11 days. And I vividly remember there was this like communique that was read out um, from one of the trade unions that were at the forefront of the revolts we were witnessing in the Arab world at the time, this trade union was in Egypt. So they were involved in the mobilizations in Tahrir Square. Um, and they said to us that our, organization, our organizing was a source of inspiration for them. Um, they gave us words of encouragement to continue our resistance from within the belly of the beast. Um, and this dialogue, when I think back to it, that occurred, uh, it's the moment I remember fondly and love to speak about. It's one that I refer to whenever I think about what solidarity in practice means, because it showed me that you know, these people were in the midst of a revolution and then they were speaking to students who were campaigning against the tripling of tuition fees, something that you might think is totally does not even compare, right, one to the other. But it showed me that solidarity isn't a transaction, right? Solidarity isn't extending support with the expectation of reci uh, reciprocation. Um, solidarity is, however, about seeing the ways in which our survival and freedom are intimately bound up with one another. Um, and I'll uh, end on this one quote um, that James Baldwin wrote. He ended on this uh, in his introduction to, uh, uh, sorry, an open letter that he wrote to Angela Davis when she was arrested, um, uh, when she was third on the list of 10 most wanted fugitives and what have you in the American state were hell bent on lynching her. He wrote, um, if I can just get this quote up, um, he wrote uh, in that open letter, he kind of ended by saying, if we know, then we must fight for your life as though it were our own which it is, and render impassable with our bodies the corridor to the, to the gas chamber. For if they take you in the morning, they will be coming for us that night. Um, and that sentiment, right? That knowing that the same tools that the state uses to oppress you might tomorrow be used to oppress me. And knowing that our freedoms and our liberation is not just something that you know is, is for just one of us or for a couple. It's something that affects every single one of us every single one of us. So when we organize, we must keep up the pressure. We must keep organizing and recognize that when we organize uh, in solidarity with one another, it's not about charity or sympathy, but it's about justice and liberation. And when we do fight, we are not just fighting for our individual liberation, but for our collective liberation too.